The British Aerospace Sea Harrier is a naval short takeoff and vertical landing, vertical takeoff and landing jet fighter, reconnaissance and attack aircraft, the second member of the Harrier jump jet family developed. It first entered service with the Royal Navy in April 1980 as the Sea Harrier FRS-1 and became informally known as the Shah. Unusual in an era in which most naval and land-based air superiority fighters were large and supersonic, the principal role of the subsonic Sea Harrier was to provide air defense for Royal Navy task groups centered around the aircraft carriers. The Sea Harrier served in the Falklands War, and the Balkans conflicts, on all occasions it mainly operated from aircraft carriers positioned within the conflict zone. Its usage in the Falklands War was its most high-profile and important success, where it was the only fixed-wing fighter available to protect the British task force. The Sea Harriers shot down 20 enemy aircraft during the conflict with two lost to enemy ground fire. They were also used to launch ground attacks in the same manner as the Harriers operated by the Royal Air Force. The Sea Harrier was marketed for sales abroad, but by 1983 India was the only operator other than Britain after attempts to sell the aircraft to Argentina and Australia proved unsuccessful. A second, updated version for the Royal Navy was made in 1993 as the Sea Harrier FA-2, improving its air-to-air -air abilities and weapons compatibilities, along with a more powerful engine. This version continued manufacture until 1998. The aircraft was withdrawn from service early by the Royal Navy in 2006. The Sea Harrier remained in service for a further decade with the Indian Navy until its retirement in 2016. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Development. In the post-war era, the Royal Navy began contracting in parallel with the breakup of the British Empire overseas and the emergence of the Commonwealth of Nations, reducing the need for a larger navy. By 1960, the last battleship, HMS Vanguard, was retired from the navy, having been in service for less than 15 years. Perhaps the biggest sign of the new trend towards naval austerity came in 1966, when the planned CVA-01 class of large aircraft carriers destined for the Royal Navy was cancelled. During this time, requirements within the Royal Navy began to form for a vertical and or short takeoff and landing v. STOL carrier-based interceptor to replace the de Havilland Sea Vixen. Afterward, the first V.STOL tests on a ship began with a Hawker Siddeley P.1127 landing on HMS Ark Royal in 1963. A second concept for the future of naval aviation emerged in the early 1970s as the first of a new class of through deck cruisers was planned. These were very carefully and politically designated as cruisers to deliberately avoid the term aircraft carrier. In order to increase the chances of funding from a hostile political climate against expensive capital ships, they were considerably smaller than the previously sought CVA-01. These ships were ordered as the Invincible class in 1973, and are now popularly recognized as aircraft carriers. Almost immediately upon their construction, a ski jump was added to the end of the 170-meter deck, enabling the carriers to effectively operate a small number of V.STOL jets. The Royal Air Force's Hawker Siddeley Harrier GR-1s had entered service in April 1969. A navalized variant of the Harrier was developed by Hawker Siddeley to serve on the upcoming ships, this became the Sea Harrier. In 1975, the Royal Navy ordered 24 Sea Harrier FRS.1 standing for fighter, reconnaissance, strike aircraft, the first of which entered service in 1978. During this time Hawker Siddeley became part of British Aerospace through nationalisation in 1977. By the time the prototype Sea Harrier was flown at Dunsfold on 20 August 1978 the order had been increased to 34. The Sea Harrier was declared operational in 1981 on board the first Invincible class ship HMS Invincible, and further aircraft joined the aging HMS Hermes aircraft carrier later that year. Following their key role in the 1982 Falklands War, several lessons were learned from the aircraft's performance, which led to approval for an upgrade of the fleet to FRS.2, later known as FA2, standard to be given in 1984. The first flight of the prototype took place in September 1988 and a contract was signed for 29 upgraded aircraft in December that year. 
In 1990, the Navy ordered 18 new build FA 2s, at a unit cost of around £12 million. Four further upgraded aircraft were ordered in 1994. The first aircraft was delivered on 2 April 1993. <laughs> Design The Sea Harrier is a subsonic aircraft designed to fill strike, reconnaissance and fighter roles. It features a single Rolls-Royce Pegasus turbofan engine with two intakes and four vectorable nozzles. It has two landing gear on the fuselage and two outrigger landing gear on the wings. The Sea Harrier is equipped with four wing and three fuselage pylons for carrying weapons and external fuel tanks. Use of the ski jump allowed the aircraft to take off from a short flight deck with a heavier load out than otherwise possible, although it can also take off like a conventional loaded fighter without thrust vectoring from a normal airport runway. The Sea Harrier was largely based on the Harrier GR3, but was modified to have a raised cockpit with a bubble canopy for greater visibility, and an extended forward fuselage to accommodate the Ferranti Blue Fox radar. Parts were changed to use corrosion-resistant alloys or coatings were added to protect against the marine environment. After the Falklands War, the Sea Harrier was fitted with the new anti-ship Sea Eagle missile. The Sea Harrier FA-2 featured the Blue Vixen radar, which was described as one of the most advanced pulse Doppler radar systems in the world. The Blue Fox radar was seen by some critics as having comparatively low performance for what was available at the time of procurement. The Blue Vixen formed the basis for development of the Eurofighter Typhoon's captor radar. The Sea Harrier FA-2 also carried the AIM-120 AM RAAM missile, the first UK aircraft to be provided with this capability. An upgraded model of the Pegasus engine, the Pegasus MK-106, was used in the Sea Harrier FA-2, in response to the threat of radar-based anti-aircraft weapons electronic countermeasures were added. Other improvements included an increase to the air-to-air -air weapons load, look-down radar, increased range, and improved cockpit displays. The cockpit in the Sea Harrier includes a conventional center stick arrangement and left-hand throttle. In addition to normal flight controls, the Harrier has a lever for controlling the direction of the four vectorable nozzles. The nozzles point rearward with the lever in the forward position for horizontal flight. With the lever back, the nozzles point downward for vertical takeoff or landing. The usefulness of the vertical landing capability of the Sea Harrier was demonstrated in an incident on 6 June 1983, when Sublieutenant Ian Watson lost contact with the aircraft carrier HMS Illustrious and had to land Sea Harrier ZA-176 on the foredeck of the Spanish cargo ship Alrigo. In 2005, although already timetabled to be retired, a Sea Harrier was modified with an Autoland system to allow the fighter to perform a safe vertical landing without any pilot interaction. Despite the pitching of a ship posing a natural problem, the system was designed to be aware of such data, and successfully performed a landing at sea in May 2005. <laughs> <laughs> Operational history <laughs> Royal Navy Topic. Entry into service The first three Sea Harriers were a development batch and were used for clearance trials. The first production aircraft was delivered to RNAS Yeovilton in 1979 to form an intensive flying trials unit also known as 700A Naval Air Squadron. In March 1980 the intensive flying trials unit became 899 Naval Air Squadron and would act as the landborne headquarters unit for the type. The first operational squadron 800 Naval Air Squadron was also formed in March 1980 initially to operate from HMS Invincible before it transferred to HMS Hermes. In January 1981, a second Operation Squadron 801 Naval Air Squadron was formed to operate from HMS Invincible. Topic: <laughs> Falklands War. Sea Harriers took part in the Falklands War of 1982, flying from the aircraft carriers HMS Invincible and HMS Hermes. 
The Sea Harriers performed the primary air defense role with a secondary role of ground attack. The RAF Harrier GR3 provided the main ground attack force. A total of 28 Sea Harriers and 14 Harrier GR3s were deployed in the theater. The Sea Harrier squadron shot down 20 Argentine aircraft in air to air combat with no air to air losses, although two Sea Harriers were lost to ground fire and four to accidents. Out of the total Argentine air losses, 28% were shot down by Harriers. One Sea Harrier alone, flown by RAF Flight Lieutenant David Morgan, shot down three Skyhawks in a single encounter. A number of factors contributed to the failure of the Argentinian fighters to shoot down a Sea Harrier. Although the Mirage 3 and Dagger jets were faster, the Sea Harrier was considerably more maneuverable. Moreover, the Harrier employed the latest AIM 9L Sidewinder missiles and the Blue Fox radar. Contrary to contemporary reports that, Viffing proved decisive in dogfights, the maneuver was not used by RN pilots in the Falklands as it was only used in emergencies against enemies unfamiliar with the aircraft. The British pilots had superior air combat training, one manifestation of which was that they thought they noticed Argentinian pilots occasionally releasing weapons outside of their operating parameters. This is now thought to have been mirages releasing external fuel tanks rather than weapons, and turning away from conflict with the Sea Harrier. This later reduced their capability to fight an effective campaign against the Sea Harrier due to reduced range and lack of external fuel tanks. British aircraft received fighter control from warships in San Carlos water, although its effectiveness was limited by their being stationed close to the islands, which severely limited the effectiveness of their radar. The differences in tactics and training between 800 Squadron and 801 Squadron has been a point of criticism, suggesting that the losses of several ships were preventable had Sea Harriers from Hermes been used more effectively. Both sides' aircraft were operating in adverse conditions. Argentine aircraft were forced to operate from the mainland because airfields on the Falklands were only suited for propeller-driven transports. In addition, fears partly aroused by the bombing of Port Stanley Airport by a British Vulcan bomber added to the Argentinians' decision to operate them from afar. As most Argentine aircraft lacked in-flight refueling capability, they were forced to operate at the limit of their range. The Sea Harriers also had limited fuel reserves due to the tactical decision to station the British carriers out of Exocet missile range and the dispersal of the fleet. The result was that an Argentine aircraft only had five minutes over the islands to search for an attack and objective, while a Sea Harrier could stay near to 30 minutes waiting in the Argentine approach corridors and provide combat air patrol coverage for up to an hour. The Sea Harriers were outnumbered by the available Argentinian aircraft, and were on occasion decoyed away by the activities of the Esquadron Phoenix or civilian jet aircraft used by the Argentine Air Force. They had to operate without a fleet early warning system such as AWACS that would have been available to a full NATO fleet in which the Royal Navy had expected to operate, which was a significant weakness in the operational environment. It is now known that British units based in Chile did provide early radar warning to the task force. Nonetheless, the lack of AWACS cover result meant that the Sea Harriers could not establish complete air superiority and prevent Argentine attacks during day or night, nor could they completely stop the daily C-130 Hercules transports night flights to the islands. A total of six Sea Harriers were lost during the war to either enemy fire, accidents, or mechanical failure. The total aggregate loss rate for both the Harriers and Sea Harriers on strike operations was 2.3%. <laughs> operations in the 1990s The Sea Harrier saw action in war again when it was deployed in the 1992–1995 conflict in Bosnia, part of the Yugoslav Wars. It launched raids on Serb forces and provided air support for the International Task Force units conducting operations deny flight and deliberate force against the Army of Republika Srpska. On 16 April 1994, a Sea Harrier of the 801 Naval Air Squadron operating from the aircraft carrier HMS Ark Royal, was brought down by a IGLA-1 surface-to-air missile fired by the Army of Republika Srpska while attempting to bomb two Bosnian Serb tanks. 
The pilot, Lieutenant Nick Richardson, ejected and landed in territory controlled by friendly Bosnian Muslims. It was used again in the 1999 NATO campaign against the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia in Operation Allied Force. Sea Harriers, which operated from HMS Invincible, frequently patrolled the airspace to keep Yugoslavian MiGs on the ground. They were also deployed to Sierra Leone on board HMS Illustrious in 2000, which was itself part of a Royal Navy convoy to supply and reinforce British intervention forces in the region. Retirement the Sea Harrier was withdrawn from service in 2006 and the last remaining aircraft from 801 Naval Air Squadron were decommissioned on 29 March 2006. The plans for retirement were announced in 2002 by the Ministry of Defense. The aircraft's replacement, the F-35 Lightning II, was originally due in 2012, the MOD arguing that significant expenditure would be required to upgrade the fleet for only six years of service. By March 2010, the F-35's introduction had been pushed back to 2016 at the earliest, with the price doubled. The decision to retire the Sea Harrier early has been criticized by some officers within the military. Both versions of Harrier experienced reduced engine performance. Pegasus MK106 in FA2 MK105 in GR7 in the higher ambient temperatures of the Middle East, which restricted the weight of payload that the Harrier could return to the carrier in vertical recoveries. This was due to the safety factors associated with aircraft land on weights. The option to install higher rated Pegasus engines would not have been as straightforward as on the Harrier GR7 upgrade and would have likely been an expensive and slow process. Furthermore, the Sea Harriers were subject to a generally more hostile environment than land based Harriers, with corrosive salt spray a particular problem. A number of aircraft were retained by the School of Flight Deck Operations at RNAS Culdros. The Royal Navy's fleet air arm would continue to share the other component of Joint Force Harrier. Harrier GR-7 and the upgraded Harrier GR-9 were transferred to Royal Navy squadrons in 2006, but were retired prematurely a few years later due to budget cuts. The UK plans to purchase the STOVL F-35B to be operated from the Royal Navy's future Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carrier. Although withdrawn from active Royal Navy service, Sea Harriers are used to train naval aircraft handlers at the Royal Navy School of Flight Deck Operations. <laughs> Indian Navy In 1977, the Indian government approved of plans to acquire the Sea Harrier for the Indian Navy. Prior to this, rumors reportedly were circulating of a potential Indian purchase of the Soviet V STOL capable Yak 36. The BAE Sea Hawk was phased out from the Indian Navy in 1978, in preparation for the purchase of Sea Harriers. In November 1979, India placed its first order for six Sea Harrier FRS MK-51 fighters and two TMK-60 trainers. The first three Sea Harriers arrived at Dabolam Airport on 16 December 1983, and were inducted the same year. Ten more Sea Harriers were purchased in November 1985, eventually a total of 30 Harriers were procured, 25 for operational use and the remainder as dual-seat trainer aircraft. Until the 1990s, significant portions of pilot training was carried out in Britain due to limited aircraft availability. The introduction of the Sea Harrier allowed for the retirement of India's previous carrier fighter aircraft, the Hawker Sea Hawk, as well as for the Navy's aircraft carrier, INS Vikrant XHMS Hercules, to be extensively modernized between 1987 and 1989. India has operated Sea Harriers from both the aircraft carriers INS Vikrant and INS Virat XHMS Hermes. The Sea Harrier allowed several modern missiles to be introduced into naval operations, such as the British anti-ship Sea Eagle missile, and the French Matra Magic missile for air-to-air -air combat. Other ordnance has included 68mm rockets, runway denial bombs, cluster bombs, and potted 30mm cannons. There have been a significant number of accidents involving the Sea Harrier. This accident rate has caused approximately half the fleet to be lost, with only 11 fighters remaining in service. Following a crash in August 2009, all Sea Harriers were temporarily grounded for inspection. 
Since the beginning of operational service in the Indian Navy, seven pilots have died in 17 crashes involving the Sea Harrier, usually during routine sorties. In 2006, the Indian Navy expressed interest in acquiring up to eight of the Royal Navy's recently retired Sea Harrier FA-2s in order to maintain their operational Sea Harrier fleet. Neither the Sea Harrier FA-2's Blue Vixen radar, the radar warning receiver or AMRAAM capability was proposed to be included. Certain US software would be also be uninstalled prior to shipment. By October 2006, reports emerged that the deal had not materialized due to the cost of airframe refurbishment. In 2006, the Indian Navy started upgrading up to 15 Sea Harriers in collaboration with Israel by installing the Elta L M2032 radar and the Rafael Darby medium range air to air BVR missile. This enabled the Sea Harrier to remain in Indian service beyond 2012, and also see limited service off the new carriers it planned to acquire by that time. By 2009, crashes had reduced India's fleet to 12 from original 30. India plans to introduce larger aircraft carriers that can operate Russian MiG 29K carrier fighters from their flight decks to replace the Sea Harrier. The Sea Harriers operated from INS Virat for the last time on 6 March 2016. On the 11th of May 2016, a ceremony was held at INS Hansa, Dabolam, Goa to commemorate the phasing out of Sea Harriers from INAS 300 White Tigers. Sea Harriers and MiG-29 Kilo Seconds performed an air display at the ceremony, marking the final flight of the Sea Harriers in the Indian Navy. INAS 300 subsequently introduced MiG-29K Cub fighters to replace the retired Sea Harrier fleet. Topic. Variants Sea Harrier FRS.1 57 FRS 1s were delivered between 1978 and 1988, most survivors converted to Sea Harrier FA 2 specifications from 1988. Sea Harrier FRS.51 Single seat fighter, reconnaissance, and attack aircraft made for the Indian Navy, similar to the British FRS 1. Unlike the FRS 1C Harrier, it is fitted with Matra R550 Magic Air to Air missiles. These aircraft were later upgraded with the Elta L M2032 radar and the Rafael Darby BVRAAM missiles. Sea Harrier FA.2 Upgrade of FRS 1 fleet in 1988, featuring the Blue Vixen Pulse Doppler radar and the AIM 120 AM RAAM missile. Topic. Operators India Indian Navy Indian Naval Air Arm 1983 United Kingdom Royal Navy Fleet Air Arm 1978 Topic. Surviving aircraft A number of surviving Sea Harrier airframes are held by museums and private owners, and some others are at the Royal Navy School of Flight Deck Operations at RNAS Culdros and other military bases for training. The following is list of those not used by the military for training. Topic: <laughs> India. On display Sea Harrier FRS 51 in 621 at the Naval Aviation Museum, India, in Goa, India. Sea Harrier TMK.60 in 654 at the Rashtriya Indian Military College in Dehradun, India. Topic United Kingdom on display Sea Harrier FA.2XZ 457 at the Boscombe Down Aviation Collection, Old Sarum, Wiltshire. Sea Harrier FRS.1 XZ 493 at the Fleet Air Arm Museum, Yeovilton, Somerset. Sea Harrier FA.2 XZ 494 at the Castle Farm Camping and Caravanning, Wedmore, Somerset. Sea Harrier FA.2 ZA 175 at the Norfolk and Suffolk Aviation Museum, Flixton, Norfolk. Sea Harrier FA.2 ZA-176 at the Newark Air Museum, Newark, Nottinghamshire. 
See Harrier FA.2 ZD607 at the Defence Storage and Distribution Agency, Bista, Oxfordshire. See Harrier FA.2 ZD613 on the roof of a building at the Cross Green Industrial Estate, Leeds, West Yorkshire. See Harrier FA.2 ZE691 at Woodford Park Industrial Estate, Northwich, Cheshire. See Harrier FA.2 ZE694 at the Midland Air Museum, Coventry, Warwickshire, stored or under restoration See Harrier FA.2 XZ459 with a private collection in West Sussex. See Harrier FA.2 XZ497 with a private collection at Charlwood, Surrey. See Harrier FA.2 XZ 499 with the Fleet Air Arm Museum Storage Facility Cobham Hall, Yeovilton. See Harrier FA.2 ZD 582 with a private collection at Aino, Northamptonshire. See Harrier FA.2 ZD 612 with a private collection at Topsham, Devon. See Harrier FA.2 ZD 614 with a private collection at Lymington, Hampshire. See Harrier FA.2 ZE697 at the former RAF Binbrick, Lincolnshire. See Harrier FA.2 ZE698 with a private collection at Charlwood, Surrey. See Harrier FA.2 ZH799 with a private collection at Tunbridge Wells, Kent. See Harrier FA.2 ZH806, ZH810 and ZH812 with a dealer near Ipswich, Suffolk. Topic: United States. Airworthy C Harrier FA2 registered N94422, formerly Royal Navy serial number XZ439, Knowles Aviation, St Mary's County, Maryland. The former Royal Navy C Harrier FA2 was purchased in 2006 by Art Knowles, who spent the next two years restoring it to flying condition. In December 2007, it was damaged in a hard landing, while undergoing testing at Naval Air Station Patusent River and had to be repaired. The aircraft made its first public appearance at an air show in Culpeper, Virginia in October 2008. The aircraft is the only privately owned, civilian flown Harrier in the world. Specifications See Harrier FA2 Data from Wilson, Bull, Donald Spick General Characteristics Crew 1 Length 46 feet 6 in 14.2 meters Wingspan 25 feet 3 in 7.6 meters Height 12 feet 2 in 3.71 meters Wing area 201.1 feet squared, 18.68 square meters. Empty weight 14,052 pounds, 6,374 kilograms. Max takeoff weight 26,200 pounds, 11,900 kilograms. Power plant one times Rolls Royce Pegasus turbofan 21,500 lbf, 95.64 kilonewtons. Performance. Maximum speed 635 knots 735 miles per hour 1182 kilometers per hour Combat radius 540 nmi 620 miles 1000 kilometers Ferry range 1740 nmi 2000 miles 3600 kilometers Service ceiling 51000 feet 16000 meters Rate of climb 50,000 feet per minute, 250 meters per second. Armament: Guns 2 times 30 millimeters, 1.18 in. Aiden cannon pods under the fuselage with 130 rounds each. Hardpoints 4 times under wing pylon stations and one fuselage pylon on centerline plus two attach points for gun pods with a total capability of 8,000 pounds, 3,630 kilograms of payload. Rockets, 4 times Matra rocket pods with 18 SNEB 68mm rockets each Missiles, air-to-air -air missiles AIM-9 Sidewinder AIM-120 AM RAAM R-550 Magic Air-to-surface missile 
Alarm anti-radiation missile arm Martel missile arm Anti-ship missiles Sea Eagle Bombs, a variety of unguided iron bombs including 3 kg and 14 kg practice bombs. Others Reconnaissance pods or 2 times auxiliary drop tanks for ferry flight or extended range, loitering time avionics Ferranti Blue Vixen all-weather airborne radar BAE Systems AD-2770 Tactical Air Navigation System Thales Madge Microwave Airborne Digital Guidance Equipment Allied Signal and – APX-100 MK-12 IFF Notable appearances in media The Harrier's unique characteristics have led to it being featured a number of films and video games. Topic. See also: Harrier jump jet, an overview of the Harrier family, list of Harrier jump jet family lost related development, Hawker Siddeley Harrier, McDonnell Douglas AV-8B Harrier II. British Aerospace Harrier e aircraft of comparable role, configuration and era Boeing X-32 Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II Yakovlev Yak-38 Related lists List of aircraft of the fleet air arm List of attack aircraft List of fighter aircraft